How's it going, everybody? My name is Alex McGregor, and I am an Olympus photographer. And I made this video, you can see right here, uh, several months ago about how to use this camera, the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III, for astrophotography. Uh, I was using the HHH R mode, the handheld high resolution mode, and I got some really cool results. But one thing I noticed is that I was shooting those images on firmware 1.0 and Olympus has come out with an update. So right now, this camera is using firmware 1.0 or 1.0.2 or something. Anyways, there has been a firmware update and some of you guys have left comments that you're not able to exactly replicate the results that I got using the EM1 Mark III. And I think it might have something to do with that firmware update. So I brought you out to my office under the stars and we're going to put this through all the same tests and a few new ones. So we'll be tracking, we'll be taking single exposures, and we'll be doing, trying to do like some nightscape shots where we don't have to blend the sky in, just using the 17 millimeter lens and our EM-13. Let's get to it. So for tonight, I'm really gonna be testing out the high resolution modes, both handheld and tripod. So I'm gonna set up my tracker and start taking some shots. I would say I'm getting some pretty interesting results so far. I tested out the handheld high res mode and the tracked high res mode both without the tracker on, just letting the camera figure out what was going on in the exposures. And it was actually fairly surprising. In the image you see here, you're looking at the handheld high resolution mode. And as you can tell, I had a mix of a little bit of foreground and a little bit of stars. And it seems like the handheld mode wanted to find whatever the motion was and correct it. So in this instance, it found the stars and aligned the stars. And in doing so, it made the foreground blurry, which is interesting. Um, it still could be a good way of getting uh, a nice lower noise image because if you compare it to this shot right here, which is the standard, uh, not high resolution mode, just one 13 second exposure, you can see it's a little less noisy. And then I went ahead and pointed the camera almost completely down like where you can't see any of the stars and the handheld mode still aligned the foreground really nicely. So it could be that you use the handheld mode aimed at the sky and it'll align the stars and then you adjust your orientation, aim it at the ground and take another shot and then blend them in Photoshop like I've shown you on all kinds of videos like this one right here. Um, and then I use the tripod mode and it's not using any of the image stabilization in the Olympus. So it's just stacking the images. And as you can see in this shot, it froze the foreground and had the stars super blurry, which is kind of what I expected to happen. And with the tripod high res mode, you can't use a ISO higher than 1600. And on this Olympus, I like shooting at 64 or maybe 32, kind of at a minimum if I'm not tracking. So I'm still not really a fan of the tripod high res mode at night, but I have just turned on my tracker. I took this image right here, which was a 60 second regular resolution shot and it tracked perfectly. So I turned the handheld high resolution mode on and it's actually shooting right now. So I'm gonna let this run and I'll let you guys know how it goes. All right, well, honestly, so far so good with the handheld high res mode. Now, fair warning, if you are using it 
on a tracker, it takes forever. And I don't think that's exaggerating. It definitely takes a long, long time doing one minute exposures, but check out the result. As you can see in this image right here, it aligned the stars perfectly and blurred out the foreground, just like you would expect it to do on a tracker shooting for that long, but it automatically stacked all those images for you. Now comparing it to the standard resolution mode, you can see the difference that it makes. You can see how it adjusts the noise and the cleanliness of the image. So I still think that even with this firmware update, Using a tracker and handheld high res mode seems to be the way to go. The tripod mode is out there doing its thing right now. I think you can see it. I think that light is the camera. That's kind of cool. So I'll let you guys know how that turns out. So the results from tracking with the tripod mode are in and you can see in this image right here that it actually works really well. The, the limitations, I guess, with the tripod mode, again, the 1600 ISO is kind of a factor. When you're shooting with maybe a not as expensive lens, one that's not quite as nice as a 17 millimeter pro from Olympus, you might get some pretty bad coma and chromatic aberration. So stopping down your lens is really nice. You can see the difference in these two images right here. The image on your left was shot with a 45 millimeter 1.8, this tiny little lens from Olympus, which is a fairly inexpensive lens and not as nice. So you can see how the chromatic aberration is super bad with this lens. So stopping it down to f2.8, which is the image on your right, really did a lot to clean up that purple fringing. The 1600 ISO doesn't allow you to shoot as bright in camera and shut down that lens. So it really depends on what gear, what lens you're working with to see if you can shoot wide open at like a 1.8 or a 1.2. And another thing with the tripod mode is that your tracking has to be pretty much perfect. In this image you see here, over the course of the time it took to capture the tripod high resolution mode with one minute exposures, my tracking was off a little bit. So we do have these lines. So having your tracking really, really good is important for the tripod mode, but not quite as important for the handheld high resolution mode. So I am still kind of preferring the handheld high resolution mode because you can shoot at higher ISOs and because it will do some of that aligning for you. It is a really nice tool. Now the downside is it takes for ever at least it feels like it when you're shooting one minute exposures for that handheld high resolution mode to do what it's got to do but the results are pretty interesting. If it's worth it to you to spend the time out here, I love how these things turn out. Now I am letting my camera shoot a foreground image. I shut the tracker off, so I will show that to you guys later and I will see you back in my office and we'll wrap things up. Okay, I'm gonna have to get through this kind of quick. So I'm shooting this outro part on the Canon R5, and I've decided to go with the 8K RAW, which gives only like a five and a half minutes of recording time on my 128 gig card. So we're gonna get through this. Uh, I'll start off by doing the normal things, like, comment, subscribe. Please, if you wanna see more videos like this one, hit the bell notification so you never miss a new upload. And if you are looking to purchase any of this gear, uh, the Olympus or the Move Shoot Move or anything that I've been working with, I have links down below. And for the Move Shoot Move, you can get 5% off of your order by entering the code Alex at checkout. And I know 5% isn't a lot, but to me it's a lot because it helps me out to keep making this content. So talking about how to get your best image quality on this little camera, from the results we've seen, I really do think that the handheld high resolution mode is this amazing little trick that can be used on your Olympus camera. It works if you have a tracker and it works if you don't have a tracker. As you saw in those examples I showed you when I was out there, 
if you don't have a tracker, you can just point the camera to show a, more of the sky than the foreground and it will align those stars for you. Then you can point it at the ground and it will align the foreground for you as long as it seems like the majority of the image is either the ground or the sky, it will align whatever you want it to. So it's a really interesting feature. And again, the whole point of it is that it's making a higher resolution and lower noise image in camera, where usually you would have to take your images one after another and stack them on the computer to duplicate those results. It's another thing that Olympus does that's really amazing and really way more interesting than like the Canon I'm shooting on right now. I love the technology in this little camera. Now, I know a lot of you guys were leaving comments that you would keep getting an error message where the high resolution image failed to process. I think a culprit for this might be the in-body noise reduction, either the long exposure or the high ISO noise reduction. Uh, when it goes to take those black frames where it's trying to eliminate the hot pixels, I don't know this for sure, but it seems to make sense that that would be a reason why it would throw off the high resolution mode because it's taking your regular exposure and then it's taking an identical dark exposure to try to map where your hot pixels are. And it just makes sense that that would throw off the high resolution modes. So if you're one of the people who left me a comment on those last videos that you were getting those errors, try it without your noise reduction on. I'm not sure if that's the issue, but for me, I was able to go out and duplicate my results last time, both on the tracker and without the tracker. The handheld high resolution seems to work fantastically. And this is the image I was able to make with this system. For this, I was using the 45 millimeter F 1.8, the lens that's on my camera right now. And this isn't the greatest lens. You can tell that there's a little bit of coma vignetting. It's not super sharp. It's kind of noisy because of this, but still I was able to get a really nice result. And this field of view is kind of only possible with the tracker. So it's another thing that I love using the move shoot move for. And that is where I'm going to leave it. Please give me your comments and questions if you're able to get similar results or if you're still having an issue. Again, I thought it was the firmware update, but I'm on firmware 1.2 and it's working perfectly. So let me know how you guys do with it. Um, the last thing is that if you would like to sign up for one of my one on one Zoom classes, the links are down below. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, you can do that by following Chasing Luminance. And I am done for today. So thank you so much for watching. Again, my name's Alex McGregor. When the stars are out, I'll see you there.